Welcome to Jamie TV where we are not at home to piss your panting about. Today I'm going to show you a great new AUV3 base app called Euclid Goes to Party. I dare not try to attempt to pronounce the developer's name so I'm just going to go it was developed by this guy. It has its own Euclidean sequencer and is great for making some instant techno type bass grooves. Let me show you the interface. Euclid Goes to Party does have its own standalone mode with start and stop controls for the Euclidean sequencer and its own little built-in keyboard. It also has a very nice clear layout in the settings section where you can alter the BPM, choose a MIDI channel, activate Ableton Link, select a controller. But for me in standalone mode it was a little bit difficult to use because it doesn't have a master volume control. It does however excel in AUM. Okay, I have a project underway at the moment, but I just want to relaunch this app from scratch just so that you can see what it's like when you open it up from the word go and I just need to attach my on-screen keyboard to it Then we'll open up the app because I just want to show you that you can use a controller keyboard To play this as a as an actual bass module it's Not easy with a mouse though and if we set the transport going in AUM, okay, so the sequencer kicks in, but we can use the keys to change the note of the sequence. Okay, now using the Euclidean sequencer, we can change the number of steps. And we can change the number of pulses in the groove and we can rotate those pulses around and although I kind of like to be in a situation where I can intentionally deliberately put the notes exactly where I want them to be and you can't do that with this app using the Euclidean sequencer in the past I have come up with grooves that I normally would not have so you know I guess in some ways it's a good thing we can also double the time we could quadruple the time and um, we could half time it etc etc down to stupidly slow okay now let's just kind of get some kind of a groove going on here uh, like this I think there I kind of like that right and then of course we can change the sound of the instrument itself so we can we could actually change the frequency here it's kind of difficult with a mouse I'm making all kinds of crazy sounds all right and we could change of course the rate an amount let's change the cutoff okay and you'll hear that when I change the cutoff and resonance we start to find those bass sounds that we really like and of course although normally I wouldn't have a bass sound with a slow attack you can in fact reduce that attack you can make the note last longer now this is just something I really want to show you all the parameters are nice and exposed in this app so let's introduce an LFO we'll use Rosetta let's just make this first one active and go back here and let's use cutoff right and then let's let's learn another one to the resonance as well okay so now I can go back to Rosetta switch the cutoff back on okay now if you've never done this before what I can do here is I can 
change the range that these controls are going to move by adjusting these parameters here. If you watch the resonance, not the cutoff rather, there we go. I happen to think that it sounds better when it was more like maybe up to about there. That's pretty cool. Okay, and the speed that they move up and down. All right, but this is this is the thing I really want to show you. We'll switch those two off for the moment and make this one active. Right now, if I come into here, switch this mode over to note and then we'll go up here right okay so that LFO is now going to change the note now if I come down to settings I can choose a scale so let's choose keep it simple we'll make it a minor scale and I forgot to choose a root note. Okay, let's make it A. Right, okay. So now what's happening is that this LFO is moving. In fact, we can switch these two back on now. Okay, so now the LFO is moving the bass up through a sequence of notes that are all in the key of A minor. Which is pretty cool. Now what we can do is in here, if I change these two parameters, that will change the range of the notes. So if I want it to go up more octaves, okay, let's have a jam. Let's throw some effects on the bass. Bring in some drums. I'll get the on screen keyboard. Close up my mic. Stop. I was going to end this video by playing out with this jam and I was just going to say some thank yous for watching blah 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 over the top but I've just spoken with the developer and he's pointed out something about the app that I'd missed and it's something I want to share with you. Now I did say that the standalone version of the app didn't have a master volume and that is accurate and the developer says that he didn't see that many people would use the app in that way so he didn't put too much time into that version of the interface so you know I suppose that's fair enough and I was thinking that in AUM I would use a fader for the volume right but he's pointed out to me that if you go into the exposed parameters there is a VCA volume so what I've done is I've selected some parameters and I've mapped them to my Akai MPK Mini so now if I press play, I have a volume for the bass. And I can have lots of fun playing around with the various parameters, especially the cutoff. I could do that all day, that's gonna be loads of fun. Now, you can also send MIDI to this app. I've been using it with Helium and with Atom. But if you do that, if you send MIDI to the app, then I suggest that you keep the attack of the VCA very low. It just responds better in that way. Okay, so I hope I've done a decent job of explaining this app. If you have any questions, then as always, do comment below the video. I always reply. Um, until next time, please be good people, enjoy yourselves, make lots of music, be nice, be good, and don't piss your pants about. Time for take two. <laughs>